insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 10, Questions and Answers. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my lovely and talented co-host, Madison Whalen. Hello, everyone. How you doing today, Madison? I'm doing pretty good. Good. So today is sort of a special podcast day for us. Mm -hmm. This is our 10th podcast in this series, which... Technically 10th. Technically, it's 11, but it's number 10 because our pod, first podcast, our pilot was podcast zero. Yeah. So I figured we've been doing some uh, kind of hard-hitting topics uh, in the last few episodes here. I figured we'd take a step back. Let's uh, take it down a notch. Let's have a little bit of fun and uh, not be as serious as we have been. So what I'd like to do is we're going to do, I went went out and, and got a series of questions, um, 101 questions that are fun and interesting questions to perk up boring gatherings. Well, this obviously isn't a boring gathering, mm -hmm. uh, but nonetheless, they are 101 fun and interesting questions. Yep. So we're not going to get through all of those. Uh, what I did was I picked a select group of those, and uh, I broke them down into... Uh, four different groups, okay? So we've got four categories. We have questions that are about you. We have questions that are pick lists where you get to pick uh, various options for there. We have questions that are time and space, which are will become uh, evident when we get to that section. Okay. And then we have questions that are related to family and friends. Um, so what I'd like to do is just get down to it, start asking the questions, and uh, let's get your answers and, and let the audience get to know a little bit more about you. Uh, and if we have some time at the end of the podcast, maybe you could ask me a few questions. How's that sound? Sounds good. All right, here we go. Let's get into it. So the first category we're going to be asking questions from is about you. So the first question is, tell me the three best things about you. Well, I'm a good student in school, technically a straight-A student, and you've seen so on my report cards when they come out. Yep. You've also seen it on some tests and courses I've shown you, so yeah, that's one of them. I'm also very imaginative, and I like to draw. That is true as well. I'm also good at building Legos. Okay. Fantastic. You're also not bad on the trumpet either. I, I will add that oh, in yeah, as well. Oh, yeah, I almost forgot. Yeah, you're pretty good at that. Uh, the next question we have about you is, if you could change one thing about yourself, what would it be? Well, it would be my athletic ability. Okay. How so? Uh, well, because you know I don't like sports. I'm pretty sure I've said that multiple times on the podcast. And that is a well-established fact, yes. And um, I just hate whenever I have to miss a ball or people always tell me to pass the ball to them and people always pick me last just because of my athletic ability. Okay, well, that's certainly a, a good trait that you'd want to improve on. Mm -hmm. So the next question that we have about you is what accomplishments are you most proud of? Well, of course, my straight A's is definitely one of them. Um, I also like the fact that how I can make little comics. I like that. And there's all, actually this thing I was working on on Google Drawings, which is of a character I had from my um, comics. And um, her name was Gwenby. She's a character. 
her name was used in one of my um one of the TV shows I watched on Netflix called The Haunted House and but we like made her look like an, an I made her look like a similar character to another character in there like which his name is Sheenby and technically they're both goblins so I had to make them look the same. Okay, very cool. What is your best childhood memory? Well, I don't really remember much, but I do remember the one day during the summer after I'd finished third grade, me and Mommy were at the park, and I met my friend Lindsay, who who also became my na- who also turned out to be my neighbor. Mommy and her dad, who we know, um, talked while me and Lindsay played, and when we realized Lindsay went to the same school as me, well, there we go. We, we became friends. Bing, bang, boom. Bing, bam, bang, boom. Okay. Sure. What is the most courageous thing you've ever done? Well, I know one t- one time you told me that the most courageous thing I've done on was on actually on the podcast talking about depression and how I faced problems in school at that time and how we didn't really plan to do depression but we did it and how it was a very hard-hitting topic but i went through it and i and we accomplished it we did and it's still one of the highest viewed uh podcast in the series so far Mm -hmm. so kudos to you for that so when you're having a bad day like you were on friday uh, what do you do to make yourself feel better? Well, I write down my thoughts. I occasionally um, try to think in my mind, it's not worth it, it's not worth it, that kind of stuff. That's, and I think that's a, that's a very good tactic. So using one word, how would you describe your family? Caring. Caring. And... The reason for that is you always want to help me with my problems. Sometimes I could consider you too caring, which isn't too bad, but yeah, sometimes I would like to be alone, but you normally sometimes ask me what's wrong. I tell you nothing, but you want to know. That was one really long word. (laughs) I'm just just (laughs) explaining it, Daddy. That's okay, sweetie. I get it. (sighs) I know. Daddy can be very annoying sometimes if I think that there's something wrong. Daddy does not just take, like, leave me alone or I'm fine for an answer there. I can be very annoying like that. Yeah. You also poke sticks in my cage. Uh, Well, I do, because sometimes I have to get reactions out of you. Of course you do. Uh, What trait do you like most about yourself? Um, I guess... The fact about my drawing instincts and how I'm imaginative and I can think of anything to entertain me. Okay, that works. Being imaginative uh, certainly suits you um, and it it will help you throughout life. Yeah. Uh, Which of the seven dwarves is most like you? Um, I'd say grumpy. Grumpy. And why is that? Well, occasionally I do tend to be grumpy, like you said, like, I'm fine, leave me alone, is how I would sometimes answer you, and I'd probably be grumpy at that time. Also, when I have bad days, I'm pretty grumpy. Sometimes on Mondays and Fridays, I get grumpy now, so. Okay, I'll I'll buy that, that works. Also, he has a realistic view of the world. Realistic, you are a realist by, for sure. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, what personal trait has gotten you in the most trouble? What do you mean by that? Well, a personal trait, like, are you, uh, rude? Are you too honest? Or do you talk too much? Like, what personal trait has gotten you into trouble? Um, I'd say occasionally my attitude. Your attitude. Okay. And I, and I would, I would agree with that. Um, but I think that's also the case for a lot of people, myself included. Yeah. So it's not unusual, um, uh, but it's, it's one of those things that you actually have control over too, which is a good thing. Yeah. 
Um, I can kind of guess at this one, but we'll see what your answer is. If you could be a cartoon character for a week, who would you be? Well, I actually have two different choices. I'd either be SpongeBob or Raven. Uh, uh, see, I was going to go with SpongeBob. I had SpongeBob down. I knew you were going to do that. Yeah. Uh, Raven from Teen Titans? The Teen Titans Go. Okay. That makes sense. I could see that. Yeah. Because she's kind of that grumpy type too, right? Yeah. Also, as a more realistic view of the world other than the other Teen Titans who just try to go with the flow. Sometimes Raven does go with the flow. Other times she's like, come on, guys. That kind right. of thing. Now, is she seen as a grumpy one on the show itself or... Well, she's not exactly grumpy. She's more, she acts like an actual teenager. Ah. Uh, I can definitely say she acts like an actual teenager, unlike the rest of them. They all act like little kids, but technically Beast Boy is a kid, so I could see that. Um, Starfire's from another planet, hasn't really learned to speak our language fully. Okay. So, and Robin is more of the adult type, I would say, because he knows all this stuff, and normally it's all about lessons, and he normally teaches all the Teen Titans about the lessons. So. Okay, fair enough. And the last question that we have in this category is, do you feel like you are a leader or a follower? A leader. A leader. And... and what traits do you demonstrate that make you feel that way? I guess I'm helpful towards others. I I feel that I should stand up for what's right, no matter what. Okay. And I care about my friends and family. Do other do other people or other kids actually follow you? I don't know. Do they do what you say? Sometimes, um, maybe. I no. don't know. Okay, all right. Well, sometimes you're a leader and don't realize that you're a leader. So, all right, that's it for that category. Moving right along to our next category. So we're going to be asking questions from our pick list category. And, and the pick list category uh, could be from various different subjects but uh, they're generally multiple choice so they're asking for multiple answers okay so the first one that we have here is what are your three favorite movies well um as previously previously mentioned before i like the teen titans so i'll say the teen titans movie and once again i also said i like spongebob i also like the sponge out of water movie um, okay and I also liked Sherlock Gnomes. Now, did you like Sherlock Gnomes more than you liked Gnomeo and Juliet? Mm, a tiny bit. Okay, fair enough. Uh, which would you pick, being world-class attractive, a genius, or famous for doing something? I would pick a genius. And why is that? Well, because if you're a genius, you'll probably get a good education, have a good job, probably get paid a good amount, and probably get a good life because of it. Maybe you'll even invent something completely new and become famous for it. Okay. I can't really argue with that. If you could eat only three foods for the rest of your life, what would they be? I would pick tomatoes, strawberries, and non-cooked carrots. Uh, non-cooked carrots, because we don't like cooked carrots. Not at all. Too mushy for you, is that it? Too mushy, taste weird, and they're juicy, which I do not like about that. You don't like juicy. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Um, let's talk about pets for a minute here. If you could ask your pet three questions, what would they be? Well, um, since we have three cats, I guess I'll ask one of them, uh, I'd ask each of them one question. Fair enough. So I'll start off with our oldest cat, Dorian. Um, I would ask her, what's it like to have two annoying siblings living with you? Or I would ask her, why do you hate, all, why do you hate your sisters? 
Because they're annoying siblings. You just <laughs> answered your own question. Oh, yeah. Okay, what's next? Um, I, for Dorothy, I would ask, what's up with you eating the weird foods like plastic bags and even fruit? A.K.A. whipped cream with fruit. Oh, yeah, she does love the uh, leftover fruit with whipped cream. She also likes Cheez-Its. She loves Cheez-Its. And she loves string cheese, too. And she also loves licking your hands after you eat cheese puffs. Yeah, she loves that, too. Yeah, she, she's big on people food. Yeah. She loves milk. Yep. Well, that's a cat thing, too. So what, would you, she, what would you ask uh, Leota? Leota? I'd ask her, what do the treats actually taste like because she's insane about them? Well, you're welcome to try one if you like. Ew! What? She likes them. I want to know what... What makes them delicious to her, and why does she go insane about it? And every and she literally tries to steal from her siblings sometimes. Yeah, well, she is a bit of a hoarder, and she's kind of insane about other things besides the um, treats, too. But she Just, seems most insane about them. I would agree. Um, okay, so would you rather win an Olympic medal, an Academy Award, or a Nobel Peace Prize? A Nobel Peace Prize. And why is that? Because out of all of the ones that you offered me, the Nobel Peace Prize seems the most noble because... Because it's wanna... named Noble? Daddy! <laughs> because I want to try and stand up for what's right. I want to prove to everyone in the world that we're all equal no matter the color of our skin or what religion we have. That, that is a noble cause that you have there, my dear. Would you rather spend five days exploring Disney or New York City? New York City. Why is that? Well, because, well, first off, I've already been to Disney, like, I don't know how many times anymore, maybe 19. More than the average human being, I'm sure. More than the average human being, yes. But you should ask Mommy. She's gone over 50 times. Yeah, she's, she's gone even more than, than us, so. Yeah. Um, so what is it about New York that interests you? Well, I've only ever been there once, and I really didn't get to do much because we weren't even there for an entire week. Right. And going there for five days might give me a chance to explore it a bit more because we didn't really get to see too much of New York. Yeah, we were just up for the weekend for... Uh, a Comic-Con. Your Comic-Con, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Uh, next question, would you rather be the most popular kid in school or the smartest kid in school and why? The smartest kid in school because I really don't really care about popularity. Um, and if I'm the smartest kid in school, I really don't, like, if you were the popular kid, you really wouldn't care about your grades. You'd only care about your own popularity and getting more popular, I guess. I don't know. I wasn't a popular kid, so I don't. I don't know what popular kids worry about. I I know. I'm pretty sure they don't worry about school, though. Probably not. No. Which is why I'd prefer to be the smartest kid in school, because I'd actually care about my academics. I wouldn't worry about having everyone like me, which is just to me sounds stupid. I agree. Good answers. Uh, next question is: What is your favorite Disney movie? I'm gonna um go with a princess movie, Moana. Aren't all Disney movies princess movies? No. So you've picked I don't think. Moana. Yes. Why? Well, because um not only is she the newest princess, but um I definitely like um the comedy that goes into it. I mean there's not there's not like a lot of comedy, but there are certain moments I like how Moana is sort of a teenager and isn't all and is one of those um, women who doesn't need a prince. And well, technically, she didn't actually say she was a princess. She said she was the daughter of the chief, even though that's kind of the same thing. Right. I agree. I like Moana because she got the job done. You know, it, it wasn't one of these things where she needed to be rescued. She did the rescuing, and and you know she. She even had to basically convince a demigod that he could do his own job. So, hmm. pretty remarkable. Yeah. She's a, she's a good good example for kids. If someone made a movie of your life, 
Would it be a drama, a comedy, a romantic comedy, an action film, or a science fiction film? i do a comedy. And why is that? Well, given that the arguments you and me have and you poking sticks in my cage, I think it would be a good comedy effect for viewers who would watch it. I think it would, too. We have, you know, we make fun of each other and we poke sticks in each other's cage. Along with Mommy. We also do that with Mommy. We do it with Mommy. Um, we do it out of fun. We do it out of love. And we have uh, a few laughs in the process. Mm-hmm. So the last question we have in this category of pick list is tell me three things you remember about kindergarten. Well, I can remember that, um, hmm. I remember that we did this one thing where there was, um, there was one person special who would pick from the week, and they didn't have to sit on the carpet. There was, like, a little couch. And, one and like, before I was able to, my week was to sit on it, Um, there was a kid. I don't remember who he was or what his name was, but he was meditated on it, meditating on it. And I figured when I was on it, I'd be like, hmm, what if I meditated? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's one thing I remember. I also remember that um, I always wanted to be the first one in the class, which is why I sometimes rushed to the door. I tried to, like, pass people in my class, but unfo but sometimes it wouldn't go my way. Other times I'd finally be able to get to class first. Wow, you wanted to be first in class. Now, I'm, you know, we're lucky if we can convince you to go to class. Yeah. Okay, what's your third? Um, I remember, like... When I was at the Y program and we were all released and I was still going through my I want to get to the class first phase. Someone didn't know how to tie their shoes, but I knew how to tie it. So I did it for them, but we were all released by then. So I probably didn't make the first um, time, but I was okay with helping the, the girl tie her shoes. Okay. Well, see, there you go. Leader, leader again. Oh, I also have one more um, topic, which is... Related to the other one on how I learned to tie my shoes. Okay. We were, we were doing a bunch of fun and we were like playing, I don't know if it was kickball or baseball, one of those where you had bases. I was like one of the, I was on the other team where the other team was trying to run. And then like when I realized my shoe was untied, I had decided to try and tie it because I didn't learn how to tie it yet. And then when I did it, I kind of screamed, I know how to tie my shoes. <laughs> and they stopped the game and everyone gave applause. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I just felt like saying it. I don't know if I said it in my mind or just said it quietly. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, moving on to our next topic of questions. So this category of questions is labeled time and space. And this will ask questions about historical figures, uh, theoretical time travel, and different locations you'd like to be. Ready? Yep. Here we go. Uh, which historical figure, if you could pick anyone in history, would you like to be? Um, I have three options. You can only pick one, though. Okay. Um... I'm just kidding. You can t say all three. All right. I'd either be Abraham Lincoln, okay. John F. Kennedy, or Albert Einstein. Okay. Two out of the three didn't really end well. I know. Okay. So let's lean towards Albert Einstein just He's, for the sake of yeah. you know, not getting gruesome. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. If you could travel in time... Where and when would you go? I would go to Egypt during the Egyptian age. That's pretty AKA vague. the pyramid. AKA <laughs> the pyramid age. So you want to be there when they're building the pyramids? Yes. Why is that? Well, I want to learn well, the main reason is I want to learn about their culture and learn things that we haven't learned already about them. Okay. Very cool. Uh, would you rather live a week in the past or a week in the future? A week in the future. Why is that? 
I want to learn all the advances that we've had in technology and other things and like health and stuff just like and I'm pretty sure I know what you're gonna say when you want to go in the future because you want to get all the lottery numbers well I don't have to go if you're gonna get them for me <laughs> yeah so just bring back a couple of winners it <laughs> doesn't have to be the biggest jackpots why not um, if you could have dinner with anyone from history, who would it be? Abraham Lincoln. And why is that? Well, I want to know what it was like being president and having to do with the Civil War. I also want to, I also want to thank him for standing up to slavery and inform him of all, of how we, how, how far we've come, um, from from his time and I would like and I want to tell him that he was a great historical figure for other people and I and I think that um can I throw in a fun fact please go ahead um the penny which has Abraham Lincoln on is the only coin he's the only president who's facing right all the others are facing left and it's said that he's facing right because he's because he stood up for what's right. Interesting. Okay. I like the answer. Uh, what do you think is the greatest invention of all time? The light bulb. Still, huh? <laughs> Even all the stuff that's been invented since then, you still think the light bulb's the greatest invention? Yes. I agree. I think it is. It's, it's changed the way human beings live. Exactly. Next question. What three famous people living or dead, would you want at your fantasy dinner party? I'd have Stan Lee. All, all, I'm with you there. Um, the creator of SpongeBob, you're probably not with me there. Well, he actually just passed away recently, but yeah. And the creator of Star Wars. George Lucas. Interesting. Well, it would certainly make for some interesting dinner conversation. Yep. Uh, back to time travel. If you could travel... Well, all right, this isn't time travel, so this is just places. So if you could travel anywhere in the world, where would it be? Tokyo, Japan. Why? Because, um, well, I want to um, see the culture Japan has and see how it's different to our cultures. I'd also want to eat sushi there. That's one of my goals. <laughs> okay. I also want to um, see Tokyo because it's one of the largest cities in the world. Also Japan's capital. Yep. And I'd also like to go to Tokyo Disneyland. Of course you would. Yeah, of course. Okay. That works for me. Uh, that brings us to our last question in our time and space category. Uh, what is the first thing you do when you get home from a trip? Um, I normally put down all the stuff I'm carrying. I say hi to the cats, see what the mess, see if they made any mess, and normally help you guys unload the car. Okay, that works. And moving right on to our last category. So this last category is family and friends. So all these questions are related, unsurprisingly, to family or friends. So let's, let's bash your parents real quick on the first question here. <laughs> so on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the harshest, how strict are your parents? On a scale of 1 to 10, I choose 1. 1? Well, then I'm not really doing my job at that point, am I? What do you mean? I'm um, actually fine, 5. Okay, that's better. So there. now I don't have to get more strict. There. Uh, okay, if you had to leave the Earth on a spaceship and take four friends with you, who would they be? Um, I'd take Lindsay, my friend Mariah... My friend Elena and my friend Natalia. Good, you're not taking any boys with you. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> I don't really have any boyfriends, like boy. That works for me. Friend. Oh, okay. Like male friends. Gotcha. There. 
Uh, who is the funniest person you know? You. Why is that? Well, because you normally poke a stick in my ca t cage. You tell a lot of dad jokes, I've noticed recently. But are they funny, though? Occasionally. <laughs> Once in a while, I get a good one, huh? Occasionally, I would just... And normally, I would just say, Daddy! Yes, you would. As if you were poking a stick in my cage while telling a dad joke. Exactly. So, yeah. You all, I also like when you and Mommy have small fights, like... You poke a stick in her cage. Yeah, they're really not fights. That's just play sparring. Our arguments are also quite funny, which is also why we'd have a comedy instead. Yes, we would. Okay, uh, your next question, which I already know the answer to, is who is or was your favorite teacher and why? My favorite teacher was my fifth grade teacher, Mr. Trombetta, or as we call him, Mr. T. A bit of the fool. Daddy. Because he was a very good teacher, he made us all laugh, and even though he um, made kind of made fun of me of my arachnophobia, we had a good relationship. That's okay. Daddy took and care of the whole do. arachnophobia, didn't he? Yep. That's right. He won't make fun of you again. <laughs> yeah. He won't. Uh, who is the kindest person you know? Mommy. Yes, she is. She's the <laughs> kindest person I know too. Yep. So I'm funny, she's kind. I think that's a fair trade, don't you? Yep. Okay. Uh, what is your favorite family tradition? When we all go to Gma's house to have Thanksgiving, I really like how we're all gathered together and I get to see the family I never normally see, even though I really don't like the food. Yeah, well, okay. So desserts oh. are okay though, right? Yep. So they got a good dessert menu there. Yep. Um, what, uh, which of your friends are you the proudest of and why? Uh, can I have an example? I really don't know. Well, an example of what? A friend or being proud of someone? Like being proud of a friend. Can you give me like a, a an explanation of like that? Like I'm proud of Madison because Madison had the courage to stand up to the bully. Oh, Okay. So do you have an answer to that, or was it just an enlightening I do, experience? I just want to... <laughs> <sighs> the friend I'm most proudest of would be... That's a lot of dead air going on there. Doug! Why? Why, Daddy? Why? Come on, give me an answer. Okay, okay. I guess... Mariah. And, and Why? Well, she's facing some difficulties now. Okay. And, um, but she's been able to get through them. I've also helped her along the way, and she's staying strong. Okay. Good for her, and good for you for for sticking with your friends and, like that. And we still, and we still laugh even though she's going through hard times. And I think you have to. If you don't, what's the alternative? Crying? That that doesn't solve anything. Yeah. What is the best part of being a part of your family? Um, I get a lot of good support. You can help me with my problems when you're able to. Yep. You do the. You try and help me the best way you can, and you make you all. You occasionally make me laugh. Ah, laugh. Laughed. Okay. Laugh, Daddy. Okay. I got you. I got you. I'll edit that out later. <sighs> Uh, and the last question we have here today is what has been your favorite family vacation? Um, I guess when we went to Ohio and gone to, um, um, what was that one amusement? The King's park? Island? Yeah. King's Island. Okay. You like that? Yeah. What was your favorite part of that? Um, I guess definitely not when I went on the um Eiffel Tower. Yeah, definitely not like that. that. Nope. <laughs> uh, I guess just hanging out with you and meeting some of your friends on that were that you had friends with online. All right, cool. Well, that is the last of our questions. We're actually running a few minutes late here, so I think we're going to have to wrap this up. 
So before we wrap things up, uh, we typically give you a chance for closing remarks and shout outs. So I will turn it over to you, my dear, and ask you if you have any closing remarks for your audience. Well, I just want to say if you ever are going through hard times and you need a little bit of help, you can probably um, go find something fun to do. And it is quite important to have fun, even when you're stressed. That's especially a good time for when you should have fun. You should try and figure out a way to calm yourself down and just try to enjoy life. All right. And if you could give a shout out to one person this week, who would it be? Um, my friend Lindsay. And why is that? Well, because she and me have shared very happy moments together. We've had a few fights, but we eventually get over them. Okay. And we're still friends to this day. That sounds fantastic. And I think that's it for this week. Uh, we'll be back next week with probably another slightly harder hitting topic than our fun questions. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Madison, for your time. Thank you for having me. And we'll talk to you next week. Goodbye.